Hello Wobblies! Welcome to Wobbly Otter Outdoors. I'm Chris and this is our two plus year review of our Smitty Bill Overlander Rooftop Tent. We've had our Smitty Bill Overlander Rooftop Tent for just shy of two and a half years. We've stayed 80 nights in it and it has traveled 20,000 miles. Our Smitty Built Overlander rooftop tent sits on top of our Morris Mule trailer that we call George. Over time and with repeated use, the Velcro that's on the straps that hold the external cover down will hold less and less. In our one year rooftop tent review, we discussed using lashing straps that would go around the cover and underneath the floor of the tent to hold the cover on in high winds or highway speeds. Since then, we have discovered the simplicity and wonderfulness that is binder clips or bull clips. To use the binder clips, fashion the cover strap just like we always have. And then we use two binder clips because two is always better than one. And we put one near the top, just below the D-ring loop. And we put a second one a little further down but still where there's not something right up against it like the floor of the tent so that the binder clip won't rub against the cover and rub a hole in the cover. And we fold the little wings of the binder clips back so nothing really sticks out. And it works great. There are four bolts of the tent that hold it to the mounting rails. After each trip or before each trip it is important that you check these bolts and be sure that they are tight and secure. On the underside of the floor of the tent, you can see where the four bolts come through and secure to the rails and then the rails are secured to the rack and our Morris Meal trailer. There are two bolts per rail. And you see how the little nut on the end of the bolt fits inside of a channel? That helps that be more stable and secure. This is the channel on the rail that the little bolts go into that attach to the bottom of the tent. The reason we want to be sure that you check those bolts is because before our trip to South Dakota when I was putting the clean drop cloths in over the mattress I could hear a little tick 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 sound and when I pulled the mattress back I realized that some of the bolts were loose. When we checked them, two of the nuts were completely off of the bolts. Remember there are only four bolts holding the tent onto the mounting rails. The third nut was loose and the fourth one was tight. On the two that the nuts had come completely off the bolt, one of the little nuts had even flipped upside down inside the channel. We have no idea how that happened. So please, be sure to check the little bolts that hold the rooftop tent to the rail. This mini belt tent has done well for us in wind and rain. We were camping in Nebraska on our way to South Dakota and the forecast called for thunderstorms with 50 mile per hour winds and lightning. We experienced the thunderstorms, the lightning and the rain and the 50 mile per hour winds. We were fortunate enough not to experience the dime size hail that the forecast called for. During that storm, the side that's opposite the ladder is the one that was facing into the wind. The 50 mile per hour wind was pelting the rain into the side of the tent. We had the flap down, of course, all the flaps down to keep water out of the screens. The tent didn't leak. There was no dripping rain coming in anywhere in the tent, and there were no puddles. The tent did its job. Now, the threat of the hail made us get out of the tent and inside our pickup.
The thunderstorm lasted a couple of hours. This wall of the tent was wet. It rained so hard and the wind blew so hard that it did soak moisture into the wall of the tent. Now, if anything was against this, like the foam mattress, it did get damp, but it was not soaking wet. And after two and a half years, the fabric of the tent is intact all around. We have no holes and we have no worn spots. After leaving Nebraska, we spent the next night in South Dakota at our destination and it rained again that night. It rained for a couple of hours, a good steady rain. And again, the tent did not leak. The next day we had sunshine. Anything that was up against the wet wall of the tent was damp, like the foam mattress. We propped up the foam mattress inside with our air mattresses so that air could circulate around. We opened all the windows and the tent and the mattress were dry the next night. All the seams on the interior of the tent are taped. We are seeing several places where the tape is coming off of the seams. We considered trying to reheat the seam tape to seal it back on, but it came off once, so chances are that won't last very long, even if it would reseal. So we have purchased some paint-on seam sealer, and we will be trying that. We're seeing the seam tape come loose, mainly in the center area, center seams of the tent. But the biggest place it's coming loose is here beside the poles. The tent comes with a two inch foam mattress that has a removable cover. One reason that we use the drop cloths is I can only imagine how much of a challenge it is to put the removable cover back on the foam mattress. This is what the foam mattress looks like inside. It's strictly a simple foam mattress. It has give to it and it's easily squished. With this foam mattress by itself, our hips and our shoulders, if we're laying on our side, do touch the bottom of the tent because the foam is so compressible. Instead of replacing the mattress with something thicker like a memory foam mattress, which some people do, and that's a great idea, we have chosen to use inflatable mattress pads by Climate. This is a Static V insulated mattress pad. It's a standard size, and Bill and I each have one. And there are several reasons that we're glad that we made this choice. It easily provides that extra support. But they are also insulated, so during colder times it helps keep us warm. But the biggest reasons are when it's time to move camp and fold up the tent, we deflate them. That takes away the extra thickness to make the tent even easier to fold. The other thing that we found to be very beneficial is when we were in that thunderstorm where the walls of the tent got wet and that made the mattress wet. The two inch foam mattress dries really quickly and having the inflatable mattress pads, they didn't hold any moisture at all. And then we could inflate these a little and use them to hold up the foam mattress inside the tent so the air could circulate around it and it made it very easy to get everything dried out. And I guess the final reason we're glad that we chose an inflatable mattress pad is that if we do go backpacking or camping outside of the rooftop tent, we have a mattress pad that's very portable and we're used to using. And just a side note, I would get tired of blowing up the mattress pads when we move camp often, so we purchased the roll top air pump for the climate and it works great. This is what the inside of the tent looks like after we've removed all the bedding after the end of a trip. The four bungees that hold the walls of the tent in or help hold them in while you're folding are still doing great. They got plenty of elasticity in them. We are still using the dehumidifier packs. We'll have one or two inside the tent when we fold it up all the time, whether we're traveling or when it's folded up at home. We are continuing to use the drop cloths, the little canvas drop cloths that are six feet by nine feet in size. They very much help keep the mattress and its cover clean. Inside the rooftop tent, it is amazing how much wind and airflow that the screens will block. So if the weather and critter conditions allow it, it does help get a lot of extra airflow in the tent to unzip the windows. The travel cover is still doing well. 
It has no holes, no weak spots. While the Velcro at the bottom of the cover that goes all the way around isn't quite as sticky and grippy as it was when the tent was new, it's still holding the cover secure against the tent during travel and that's its purpose. The Velcro on the compression straps is still holding fairly well. These don't have a lot of pressure on them and if we needed, we could always use a little binder clip just to help keep it in place. The small poles that hold up the coverings over the windows and the doors are still doing well. They don't have any creases. We haven't had any that break. When they become bent, we kind of unbend them. We bend them back the other way. The question always is, would we buy it again? And yes, even after two plus years, I can say that we're happy with the performance of the Smitty Build Overlander rooftop tent and we would definitely buy it again. Because it's our first rooftop tent, before we bought it, we had no idea if we would like it. We thought we would, but we didn't know for sure until we got it and got to try it out. So if you're considering getting your first rooftop tent, the Smitty Belt Overlander is a good choice. It's one of the least expensive on the market. I've looked and looked at other small rooftop tents to see if I could figure out what the difference is between the Smitty Belt and the others. The only things I can find are some of the other tents have slightly larger interior frame poles. There's nothing at all wrong with the frame poles inside this tent. And they've supported it in strong thunderstorms. So that's not an issue. Another thing I've seen is some of the interior frame poles are wrapped in other tents. The poles on the inside of this tent are not wrapped. Not having a cover on them is not an issue for us. And a third thing I've seen that's different is the thickness of the foam mattress inside. Many of them have two and a half or three inch mattresses, and that can be a plus. Does that justify spending several hundred dollars more? Maybe not. Did we have the extra expense of mattress pads to compensate for this two inch mattress? Yes, we did. So think about what would work best for you. We'll put links in the description to this tent and also the products that we use consistently with it. And we wanna give a shout out to Tyson and Pam who live in Texas. When we were recently visiting Valle Varal in New Mexico, after a hike we came back to camp and found a nice note from them on our picnic table. And we want to thank you very much for that. Thanks for watching Wobbly Otter. We love ya and we hope all your tomorrows are bright. We look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you for watching and subscribing to Wobbly Otter Outdoors.